evening, everybody. Hello. Hi. Uh, hello. <laughs> it's great to see everyone who's here tonight here and not sick, but one of we here tonight. I'm glad everyone who's here can make it. And at this time, I will ask that you take out your hymn books and stand if you're able as we sing our chorus of the week, 522. 522. And please stand if you're able as we sing 522 in his time. 522. In, in his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Next hymn for tonight will be 96. 96. 96. 96. Bring them in. We'll sing all three verses. 96. 96. Hark, tis the shepherd's voice I hear out in the desert, dark and real, calling the sheep who have gone astray. The shepherds fold away. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Must you? Who'll go and help this shepherd kind? Help him, the wandering ones, to find. To the fold, well, they'll be sheltered from the cold. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the Jesus. Verse 3 How did the desert hear their cry? Out in the mountains, wild and high. Hark, this the master speaks to thee. Go find my sheep wherever they be. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. And now it is time for a welcome and prayer by Pastor Storm. Amen. I'll tell you what, we've got a lot to pray for tonight. Uh, we've got a lot of people that are out sick. We want to pray for uh, Brother Echoes. He just got out of the hospital. Uh, we want to pray for him. We want to pray for Brother Dana and his test results. And we want to pray for Brother Holcomb. He was in the hospital again last night. Got out again today. Uh, he's been in there now uh, two times this week. And we're going to pray for him. And uh, then just continue to pray for me for, um, uh, for my healing. Also, we want to pray for my wife. She fell down last night, hurt her back again. And we may have to take her into the hospital tomorrow. She might have cracked another vertebrae. So let's go Lord in prayer, shall we? Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you most of all for the opportunity coming into your presence one more time with our prayers. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for Wednesday night that we can lift our voices up to you. And, Father, we just thank you so much for uh, having a missionary tonight. We just pray, Lord, that you take and be with the service. And, Father, we just pray for Brother Echoes, pray that the doctors know exactly what to do for him, and pray for Dana that um, his blood work and stuff would come back uh, normal and that his uh, 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 lipitoids would be good. And we pray also for Brother Holcomb um, <clears throat> with the pneumonia that he has. I just pray, Lord, that you take and Lay your hand in hand upon him and be with my wife, Lord. I just pray that you touch her back, that she wouldn't have pain tonight, and that she'd be able to sleep. And pray for me that I might uh, be able to uh, heal quickly. And Father, we just thank you so much for loving us. We thank you for what you've done in this church. I just pray now that you'll guide and direct everything that we do and say tonight. That will be for your honor and glory. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Next, we have time tonight for one request and one request only. One, yes, sir. 56. 56 is our first and last request of tonight. 50 is our first and only request of tonight. 56. 56. The old rugged cross. So 56. For our first and only request of tonight, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 56. On a hill away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for what I was sin has was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trust. Someday for a crown lost to Oh, that old rugged cross So despised by the world Has a wondrous attraction for me For the dear Lamb of God Left his glory above To bear Change it someday for a crown possible to the old rugged cross. I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home away where his mother. Someday for a crowd. Amen. Okay, good request. Amen. Hey, beautiful singing tonight, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now it is time for praises. Does anyone have a praise they'd like to share tonight? Anyone to start off tonight? Yes, sir. Amen. Well, I mean, thank you for sharing. Okay. Does anyone else like? Hello. Okay. Does anyone else have a phrase they'd like to share? Yes, sir. Uh, Amen. Oh, praise. I'm glad it went well. Our seams have done well. I'll be praying for him. Yes. 
Does anyone else have faith they'd like to share? If not, then at this time we will have announcements by Pastor Storm. Amen. I'll tell you what, it's good to be in church on Wednesday night. We got a lot of people gone, and um, we've got people that are all sick. Um, Brother and Miss Holcomb are gone. Um, Nancy had to take uh, Jacob over to um, Casa Grande for some test or something for the Army. And so they um, are over there, and uh, we've got, um, um, oh, Robert's on his way from Sonora. He was all the way down in Sonora today. And uh, so it, uh, so we've got uh, um, so a lot of people gone today, but we've got a lot of things coming up. We've got, um, um, Frank. Where do you live? Okay. All right, we'll do that. Okay, thanks, Nick. I need to pray for um, their family. Um, anyway, <coughs> we've got a uh, um, missionary night. Uh, this coming Saturday, we've got men's breakfast at, at 8 o'clock, uh, Meriden's prayer breakfast. We've got uh, this Sunday, we've got Robert Mann is going to be, Marvin's going to be here. It's going to be a great Sunday, I'll tell you. I'm looking forward to that. Also, on February 5th, the question and answer. Uh, the 8th is going to be our Valentine's dinner uh, here at the church. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, you want to make sure you're here for that. Uh, February 9th, uh, Greg Wagner will be here. Uh, the 14th is Tug. The 15th is um, Men and Ladies Fellowship. Um, the Also, we'll have trap and skeet practice in the afternoon for the high school kids. Uh, the 22nd is movie night, 23rd is noisy bucket, 28th is tug, 29th is trap and skeet practice, the March 4th is question and answer, and we've got a lot of things coming up in March. So just mark your calendars for February so we can get through that, and then we'll get into March. But uh, it's good to have everybody here tonight, and I'm um, so glad you could be here. All right, Abed, course of the month. And now it is time for our course of the month, hymn number 99. Please stand if you're able as we sing 99. 99. Please stand as we sing. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, history good and in God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord Wonderful. Say hi to everyone.
One more time. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? All right, let's pray for our offering, shall we? Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the poor for being able to give a portion of that which you've given us back to you. I just pray now you bless these offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'll tell you what, I'm excited about tonight. You know, this is the last Sunday of Missions Emphasis, or the last Wednesday night, I should say, of Mission Emphasis Month. Um, we used to have missions conferences and then have missionaries in Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And Monday and Tuesday, usually we didn't have many people here. Actually, we don't have many people here tonight. But uh, we started doing it on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And then we run it through the whole month of uh, January. We get to see more missionaries, plus um, we get to spend a little more time with them. So, but tonight we've got the Grays here. They're going to be missionaries to uh, the Philippines. And I got the name right? Jones. Huh? Jones. Jones. I knew it was, I knew it was a neat. Well, we had Brother Gray here on Sunday, and that's why I was thinking Gray. Um, anyway, uh, the Joneses are here. They're going to be going to the Philippines. I'm excited about that. Because um, that's where um, <clears throat> uh, somebody has a <clears throat> uh, other half. Anyway, um, I don't know who that would be. Right? Did you text her and tell her to watch? Oh, okay. She watches almost every service. So, but, um, so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the Joneses. They've got their um, um, video presentation and, and everything for us. So God bless you. Okay, you have me on. So, all right. Well, it's a it's a blessing to be here with you and to get to present our ministry to the Philippines. But if I make the statement to you, no man is an island to himself. Is that biblical? What do you think? Okay, Romans fourteen seven. No man liveth to himself. No man dieth to himself. Whether we live, we live to the Lord. And I know I butchered the verse, okay? But, you know, um, in reality, we need each other. So we're not an island to ourselves. Um, but, you know, so much of what missions work has been perceived at is really one man going out into one location, almost in a Lone Ranger type mentality, you know, but um, what we're doing is a unique ministry uh, in the Philippines. Our ministry is pioneering missions in the Philippines, all right? Now, our goal, all right, is to plant a thousand churches in the next 20 years, okay? Now, when I, when I put that out there, unless you've been to the Philippines, you might think I'm crazy. But if you've been to the Philippines and you've seen what's going on there, it's very realistic. But I actually just Friday, about midnight, I got back from the Philippines. I was just there. And we took part 
in two church planting works there in the Philippines. And we actually had part in training these men in the Philippines. Now, I'm praying that I could go back in March. When I go back in March, we're going to have 30 or more that we're going to teach sign language to. Now, when you talk about, you know, missions, missionaries, the focus is training the nationals to do the work. You know, we've sent missionaries for years to the Philippines, the 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, we have sent missionaries there for years. And I actually met another American missionary that really is, has the same mindset as me um, on this last trip in the, in the Philippines, Mike Nislin. And um, he made the statement to me. Actually, I made the statement to him first, and he agreed with me. It's time for the Filipino people to take the leadership in the churches. You know, it's time for them to step up to this. Um, I was at Faith Baptist Church, Mexico, Patapanga, uh, Philippines. And um, we are actually um, teaching their Bible college students right now. And they have uh, two, they actually have, I believe, two men in the Bible college right now that are planting churches. You know, there, there, there was a day in America you know, when you graduated from Bible college, you loaded up the U-Haul and took off across the country and said, we're going to go plant a church. Uh, but we don't see that type of faith in America. Right. You know, but in the Philippines, um, Pastor John L. Suet is the pastor of that church. When he went to start that church, um, he had a, a food cart. Now, if you don't know what a food cart is, you're going to find out soon. But a food cart is just a cart they push down the street, and they've got... Um, <coughs> a means to cook it and they sell food off that cart that's how he supported himself starting the ministry okay? you know and so he, he, just, he just went and did it now he's built a church he's got a Bible college going in his church and we are teaching in that Bible college as we speak now what are we doing what we're using is Skype. You ever hear of Skype? Okay. I've got pastors here in America that are teaching live classes on the other side of the world. So I say no man's an island to himself. I'm putting together a group of men that are teaching to the other side of the world live classes. We actually uh, just did a class um, <coughs> here a couple weeks ago. But um, we're, we're doing it live classes with men in America teaching the Filipinos. And you know, we're, we're just starting our second semester. But our goal is to be boots on the ground in the Philippines and then have these men hook on the Skype in the evenings, mornings. And, you know, with, um, with Arizona right now, you're on mountain time. Uh, but the other half of the year, you're on... Um, well, actually, you stay, everybody else moves, right? Yes. All right. And so everybody else is goofy. So, all right. Well, um, you know, there is time, three, four hours in the morning, three, four hours in the evening, depending on the time zone that we can teach live classes. I want to be boots on the ground in the Philippines, working with the Filipinos, training them, helping them to plant the churches. And um, then have in the evenings and the mornings, preachers hook on and teach live classes on the other side of the world. Because I said no man's an island to himself. You know, so we're putting together a team of people via Skype to build a Bible college via Skype and to plant a thousand churches with Filipino leadership in the next 20 years. So we'll show the video now. And so
Moses caught this vision back in 2011 on a trip their family took to the Philippines. They had an opportunity to mingle with the people and experience the culture of the place. Technology saves time and money for our poor brethren in the Philippines. just follow it with a little bit more but um, let's um, I've been there I see the need and I know you know they are begging for help first time I went to the Philippines 2011 I walked into a little room that's probably the entire room was the size of this center section there's three chairs on this side three chairs on that side there was a window here, there was a window back there, the back door was open. This was Wednesday night prayer meeting. There was more people outside the building than inside. Okay? That's how their churches are growing. 
And when you begin to talk about it, I was in, I mean, church after church after church where those buildings were packed out to the max. I mean, they, you know, and, and they're teaching the people to give and to, and to you know, to, to be able to buy property and to, to, to build their, their ministries, their churches. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a wide open mission field that the Filipinos need to take up the leadership. And that's what we're focused upon. And so I'd like to go to the book of John chapter 3. Now, I should ask, how much time do I have? Uh, you, you have about seven. About seven? Okay. So I've got about 30 minutes. So one time I was preaching, and I kept looking at my watch and said, I got another 10 minutes, and looked at my watch and said, I got another 10 minutes. And, and, for, and, and you know, about the fourth or fifth time, I looked at my watch, and it dawned on me my watch had stopped. So as long as my, my watch doesn't stop, we'll be out of here by 7, okay? So uh, John chapter 3, and um, beginning in verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, first question. That I want to ask you this evening. Why did Nicodemus come to Jesus by night? What was his reasoning? Now, in everything that we do in life is cause-effect. You understand when I say cause-effect? I mean, if it's cold, you put on your coat. There's a cause that, you know, that there's a reason for, for why we do what we do. You're hungry, you're going to get some food. I believe here Nicodemus is coming to Jesus by night in, because of something that happened. And I want to go back into chapter 2, verse 13, and give you what I believe to be the reason why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. It says in verse 13, it says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence and make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Skip down to verse 18. And it says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. (coughs) This is the Jews' Passover. This is the most holy revered day in the Jewish religion. This was the start of their new year. This was the ultimate religious festival. And the Jews literally from all over the world are coming to Jerusalem if they could make it for this Passover. And Jesus, twice in his ministry, here at the beginning, in the book of Luke at the end of his ministry, did this where he made a scourge, a small cord, and went in there and drove out the, the money changers. And he said here, take these things hence and make not my father's house and house of merchandise. When he did it in the Gospel of Luke, he called them a den of thieves. Hey, do you think Nicodemus could have been in the temple when this was taking place? I think it's, a, it's realistic. But if he was not in the temple, I am sure as a leader of the Jews, a member of the Sanhedrin, that he got a report at least. But Jesus said here, you know, this is my father's house. 
The Jews immediately asked him, okay, what sign showest thou unto us? He's claiming it to be his father's house. The Jews asked for a sign. Jesus here is claiming to be their Messiah. And Jesus gives them the sign, destroy this temple, in three days I will raise it up. Speaking of the temple of his body, but they thought he was talking about the, the building itself. And so Nicodemus, I think, is coming to Jesus by night in really two reasons. One, I think he's part of the corruption. As a ruler of the Jews, he would have to turn his head the other way and ignore what was going on in the temple. And Jesus just went into that temple and cleansed it. Threw out the money changers, probably offended some of his cousins, some of his nieces and nephews, maybe were the ones selling things in the market and, and cheating people. <coughs> Can I say this? Where there's money, there's power. And where there's power, there's corruption. And listen, when you begin to deal with third world country politics, that is, that is, that is it. Where there's money, there's power, and where there's power, there's corruption. Nicodemus is a part of the problem. And I believe that Nicodemus is ashamed to be seen with Jesus Christ. He doesn't want to be seen with this guy that just went into the temple and, you know, threw out his cousins. You know, he, he, he doesn't, you know, so he's coming to Jesus by night. You know, and I think uh, the second thing that's, that's driving him here to come see Jesus is his claim that this is my father's house. I think Nicodemus wants to know, are you the Messiah? Are you the promised one that's been foretold in the Old Testament? You know, and I, I think Nicodemus wants to find out. <coughs> but he's ashamed of Jesus Christ. What was it? that took Nicodemus from being ashamed of Jesus Christ and changed his life. Nicodemus was known throughout Christ's ministry as the secret disciple. What was it that took him from being the secret disciple to not being secret about it anymore? And you know, many times in our lives, we're ashamed of Jesus Christ. Right. We're ashamed of him. You know, but here, what took Nicodemus from that life of shame and made him what God wanted him to be? I want to preach that to you this evening. Verse number three. Actually, verse number two of John chapter three. It says, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know. Those are key words there, we know. Right? What does Nicodemus know? He says, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And what Nicodemus said was absolutely true, wasn't it? Jesus came forth from God, but what Nicodemus did not know is that Jesus Christ is God. You know, and, and that he was that Messiah. And so now the Lord Jesus Christ is going to bring him to understand his need. In verse number three, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? <coughs> can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, I read that verse. Jesus said, you must be born again. Nicodemus makes the statement, I've got to go a second time into my mother's womb and be born. Now, when he makes that statement, I think he's making that statement in one of two um, emotions. One, he's either being stupid. Okay. You mean I have to go a second time into my mother's womb and be born 70, 80 years old? Mother, if she was still living, you know, would be 
you know, 80, 90 years old, maybe, you know, walking with the, you know, the walker in the nursing home, you know, is, is, is that what he's saying? Or is he being sarcastic? You know, he could have been sarcastic here. I mean, now, I, I, I've looked at both of those, and I, 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 I have to say, it could be one or the other. That he's just being stupid or he's being sarcastic. You know, maybe it's more sarcasm. I don't know. Um, but Jesus answers his question in verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Jesus answered it, his statement. You know, that which is born of the water is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And what Jesus said is not the physical birth that you need, it's a spiritual birth. And so, you know, Jesus says to him, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. <coughs> Jesus then goes to explain the spiritual birth in verse number 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Do you see the wind? No, we don't see the wind, do we? But we see the effects of it, don't we? We can feel it on our faces. We see the effects. You know, John eight thirty two. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John eight <coughs> thirty six. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We're made free. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, made free, new creature. Behold, all things are become new. Hey, I don't see how it happens. I don't know how God changes a life, but I've seen it happen so many times when you're sharing the gospel with somebody that God can change the life with just the simple faith in Him. Verse number 9, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Nicodemus is asking a question. How? How? Verse number 10. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? And what are those next two words? Knowest not? Of these things. Now, wait a second. Nicodemus said back in verse number two, we know. Now, wait a second. Who was with Nicodemus? Now, he was all by himself, wasn't he? But he said, we know. You know? And so I think Nicodemus here is dealing with his pride. You know, and, you know, all of a sudden Jesus says to him, Nicodemus, you don't know. You don't know. He says, art thou a master of Israel? You're a, a master. You're, you're the man with the PhD. You're the one that's teaching the priest, and they're taking your material out and giving it to the, to, to the people throughout the land of Israel, and you don't know what I'm talking about. You see, Nicodemus had confidence in what he knew. But listen, is there something God wants us to know? further I think there is Paul said in Philippians 3.10 that I may know him sometimes we just become comfortable with what we know and we're not hungry to know something more about God you know there needs to be that thirst in us that we want to know and the Lord Jesus Christ is bringing Nicodemus to this point that he says, I don't know. Now all of a sudden, Jesus can begin to 
instruct him on what it was he needed to know. On what it was that was going to change his life. Verse 11, verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. Hey, we speak that which we do know, don't we? Baragan Gabi? Actually, I should say for the other side of the world, Madagan Umaga. All right. Good morning. You know, that's what it, the Philippines is. Madagan, Madagan Gabi is good evening. And um, Komasta. You know, um, that's how they say it in the Philippines because of the Spanish influence. But um, hey, we speak that we, we do know, don't we? You know, and we testify to what we see. And he's telling Nicodemus this, hey, we speak those things that we do know. And, you know, we put confidence in those things that we do know. In verse number 12, he says, if I've told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe? How shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Jesus said here, look, I've explained this to you on earthly terms. If you don't understand what I'm saying, what are you going to do if I tell you something heavenly? Okay, verse 13 is the heavenly. He says here in verse 13, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Now, what was Nicodemus' statement back in verse 2? His statement was the same as what Jesus said. What Nicodemus said in verse 2 is, you know, we know that thou art a teacher come from God and that no man can do these miracles that thou doest. That's, that's what Nicodemus said, wasn't it? Is that not what Jesus repeats here in verse 13? No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, speaking of himself. He says the same thing to him. But Jesus, as the master soul winner, the master teacher, brings Nicodemus to this point that all of a sudden he's confronted with this idea, I don't know. Jesus is saying, I must be born again. And now here comes the new truth that Nicodemus absolutely needed to understand. The end of verse 13, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Okay, who's the Son of Man? Jesus. What does it mean? It means he's human, right? Jesus in a physical human body is human. But he says, which is, present tense, in heaven. The Son of Man and the Son of God, the God-man, come together in this verse in an amazing way. And listen, when you leave it out, Nicodemus doesn't get anything new, right? Um, but here... Jesus takes Nicodemus to what he needs to know. I'm God in the flesh. Now, I can just picture Nicodemus and Jesus in the dark talking. I can see Nicodemus maybe starts to tremble a little bit as he realizes I'm face to face with the God that brought the plagues upon the Egyptians, the God that made the world, the God that parted the Red Sea, I can see Nicodemus in his you know, um, knowledge of the Old Testament maybe begin to think Jehovah Jireh, the Almighty, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, that rock. I can begin to think of you know, Nicodemus and now Nicodemus has been brought to where he's going to hear what he needs. Verse 14, he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. He now takes Nicodemus to a familiar Old Testament story. Children of Israel disobeyed God. God sent poisonous snakes among them. And the snake started biting the people, and the people started dying. 
And they came to Moses, and God said, Moses, you see that snake? He said, I want you to make one out of brass, just like it, and I want you to lift it up on the floor. And whoever was bitten of a snake, if they would look at that snake hanging on that pole, they would live. And it says here, as the Son of Man, Jesus, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, Jesus in a physical human body, lift it up upon that cross yeah. as the curse for sin, paid for our sin, paid for it in full, cried out, it's finished. You know, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, could you imagine being Nicodemus in the dark, talking to Jesus? And all of a sudden, Jesus says these words to him. We hear them. We take them for granted. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Could you imagine Nicodemus hearing that for the first time? Now, Nicodemus put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, but he was known as the secret disciple. He was one of them. Until one event took place. And Nicodemus is no longer a secret disciple, but when Jesus was lifted up upon that cross the emblem of suffering and shame. That shame, that embarrassment that Nicodemus had that made him come to Jesus by night when he saw him lifted up upon that cross and died. Nicodemus and another man, Joseph of Arimathea, went to Pilate publicly and begged the body of Jesus. What was it that took him from being the secret disciple to publicly asking for his body? It was very simple. He saw the Lord lifted up upon that cross with his own physical eyes. That took him from the life of shame to publicly proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ. This man, Nicodemus, Orthodox Jew, it was forbidden for him to touch the dead body. But he went with his own hands and took the body of Jesus down from off that cross and buried him in a tomb. No longer a secret disciple, but publicly going and taking his body and burying it. That's what took him from a life of shame to a life of publicly proclaiming and identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, shame can become a thing that can control us. You know, we can become ashamed of Jesus Christ. But what changes that is when we with the spiritual eyes get to a vision of him lifted up. And you know what I mean by a vision. You see it spiritually. Okay? I'm not talking charismatic stuff, so you know. But it's lifting him up and seeing him lifted. And that's what he said. And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Um, Matthew chapter eleven. Verse 28, Jesus gives an invitation. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, uh, upon you, and what are those words? Learn of me. We're to learn of him, aren't we? That I may know him. See, Nicodemus knew some things, didn't he? But what, did it was, what was it that God wanted to reveal about himself to Nicodemus? Exactly what Nicodemus needed. And 
if we'll come to Jesus, we can learn of him as we need. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, learn of him. Nicodemus did, and it changed his life. If we will focus upon learning more of him, it can help us to change our lives too into a greater vision for 2020, right? Preacher? We need to realize that we all need to be in the service of the king. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for all that you've done for us. I just pray now that you'll guide and direct us. I just pray that you'll help us in all that we do. Father, we know that it's such a great thing to be in the service of the king. Maybe there's one here tonight that is watching on the internet that doesn't know you as their personal savior. Father, I just pray tonight that they might understand that they're a sinner. They would need to understand that there's a penalty for their sin. They need to understand that you died on the cross. If we went one verse further than what we did tonight, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A person needs to understand that Jesus died for your sins and mine. You can accept him tonight just by asking and saying, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know there's a penalty for my sin. And I accept Jesus to be my personal savior. I want to live for him from here on, just like Nicodemus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight, and um, I'll tell you what, get to know the missionaries before you leave, and it's been a super great night. Amen? Amen. All right, you are dismissed.